Ta-da. I'm <laughs> Nineteen <laughs> I don't think there's any, been any other people around this area before before the Guichin got here. I don't I don't think there's any been anybody else here. The Guichin, when they were migrating through, and they see where the caribou was migrating that time, that's that's pretty much how they decided where where to uh, to stay.
I think I was seven years old when I, I shot my first caribou, and that was 40 years ago. Uh, I was 11 years old when I shot my first moose. Nature supplies us with everything. I mean, food, uh, timber for, for cabins, uh, wood, firewood. I mean, basically everything that you need is out here. Berries, water, clean water, moose, caribou, fish, uh, ducks. You know, it's, that's what's out here. The area that they want to drill for, they, they want to drill in, that's basically the same area where caribou have their calves. I mean, th these caribou, they continue to go to this certain place there year after year after year. Because, uh, I mean, everything, everything is perfect for them there. I mean, God put this land here for us to live off of, to ruin it just to get more money. That's not right. That's not right. Ten years later, actually in 1967, we had, uh, you know, a huge discovery up on the North Slope, which is up on the Arctic Ocean. Uh, and uh, the two largest oil fields in North America were found. so much money. There's 15 billion barrels of oil that come down the Great Pipe since 19, in 1977. Um, hundreds of billions of dollars have been earned, most, much of that by the state of Alaska. Uh, and the, the economy that has spun around that has been enormous. So the, and plus the politics and the way, sort of the thinking, the way people think, the, the self-identity of Alaskans has changed remarkably. Now we're an oil state. Prudhoe Bay are BP, Exxon, and ConocoPhillips. <clears throat> of those three, ConocoPhillips is the only company that's out exploring for more. Like it has always been in our lives. In fact, uh, we introduced these oil seeps to the whalers uh, when they were up here. So we knew about them uh, from time uh, as far back as our people can remember. We have used uh, some of that uh, for heating our homes. thousand people live here. Um, a mix of Inupiaf Eskimos and other cultures. Pacific Islanders are here, of course white folks are here. Um, it's a very cosmopolitan town now. 
barrel has grown since then. Barrels probably doubled in size uh, in the last 50 years. And it's become a little more modern. We had a boom of Yankee whalers. We had a boom of like, Cold War defense construction. Uh, that was 1940s through the 1950s. We had a boom in the late 60s of oil. The major changes that have happened in my lifetime began about 74, 75, when we were able to get the money from the oil development and we started depend becoming dependent upon money. We created the Home Rule government primarily here because uh, we found that uh, our land was in essence taken away from us. And so we created what we call the North Slope Borough, which is a county form of government. And so we have the largest um, uh, borough government in the, probably in the world at this point, 89,000 square miles of land. But uh, it was the only way we could uh, get money from the oil development that encroached upon our lands. The ASRC was formed as part of the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act. This was an act uh, executed in 1972 that established uh, the last claims of Aboriginal title. This, all, all of the lands of Alaska were owned by the people who've lived here for centuries. For each of us in this region, each of us uh, who are original shareholders, who are alive at the time of the Settlement Act, or children of those original shareholders. We are all members of this corporation. Every typical shareholder has about 100 shares, and in this year, I suppose the dividend is close to $5,000 in total per shareholder. In our region, we have a gift, and the gift is because there is an economic engine in our region, this oil and gas industry, our towns and our villages have been able to construct schools, fire halls, health clinics, maintain gravel roads, uh, because we tax, our government taxes the infrastructure in our region. I was probably one of the last of the generation that dressed in a traditional clothing with a dog team. We lived in this, uh, what, the Apoya, what you call igloos, when we were traveling, we would make those. Uh, as a temporary shelter. And it was the uh, same all the way across from Alaska, Canada, and over toward Greenland. Now you're taking a group of people from being hunters to businessmen without the education necessary to be a business person. It's just like taking a secretary and making that secretary the president of a large corporation. Most shareholders, members of the corporation, did not understand being a what shareholder meant. They say, this is our land. Why are you selling our land? Uh, to the government. Where is the money? How come we don't see the money from the sale of our land? And this is how they think. Everybody came on a snow machine. I took that snow machine trip. Me and my father took us three days. It's right after Christmas, I believe, we started to head here.
was uh, very hard to heat up the tent. The heat, you know, came out. It didn't hold the heat in there. So a lot of them had uh, wood stoves and hardly any wood to find. So we would look for driftwood, you know. So it was hard times here, but everybody seemed to have been happy. go hunting it to Alpine eight miles down there now because of that big oil field that's there now. That first year in 98 uh, I made a, a trail so he opens the road Basically, yeah, yeah. I made a made a trail for them with my snow machine and putting sticks down in there. Initially, uh, they said that Alpine was going to be the only one that they were going to uh, be drilling from from that drill site, Alpine. But uh, later on, uh, they moved to here. To this is a CD called CD2, and they developed that. Of course, you can see the modules and everything. Uh, it's already uh, got drill holes. Um, everything's already piped in. They're already they're pumping oil from there to Alpine and from Alpine to Prudhoe Bay in the pipeline. And this here to the to the left is called Nanook. Uh -huh. That's the that's the newest drill site. How do you call it? Nanook? Nanook, yeah. What does it mean? Polar bear. So basically this. they told you in the beginning, they told the people that they're going to have only alpine. Right, here. yes. And uh, So they lied to you? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and that, that, that's what they said. And somehow they've, they've uh, put more. They're expanding. Yes. Oh, yeah. Are they going to have another drilling site in the area? They're talking about west of here, NPRA. They've already got wells drilled and capped off over on the west side, about, uh, about five miles from here. They say they want to drill for oil here, give the everybody jobs, you know, and, and uh, 
it won't hurt the environment's going to be fine only one one place to drill there but now it's they're they're getting closer to the woodchip it's uh it's not good i don't like it what about the jobs they the, the jobs there are some a few people from the Wixit are working over there. Four. I think there are four people. They're giving jobs to four people out of 450. Right. Is the good deal? What the people say. Yeah. Conoco has got the good deal. You know, they're making the they're making the the billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, we're well we're having to put up with their with the eyesore and the and the uh, you know possible oil spills you know in the environment our subsistence way of life you know is 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 slowly um, the animals are slowly uh, not coming around anymore so you know we we got to have our subsistence our our diet consists of a, a caribou and, and fish seals and whales and, The bearded seal, when they get a um, bearded seal, sometimes we dry it up. And we always make seal oil out of the blubber. This is going to be good for the elders. <laughs> Why? It's not enough for the whole village. <laughs> My husband knows more about it <laughs> than me. In the beginning, we were uh, doing subsistence. We were we, uh, eating off the land. Mainly, uh, the bulk of our food came off the land. But uh, once the oil companies came up, I mean, everything changed. Yeah, they brought development, but uh, on the side, a lot of it is bad. I mean, there, uh, some of our. Uh, wildlife up here, they're changing their lifestyle too. So it, it, uh, it falls on us. I mean, we have to go out further uh, for whales now with all that seismic activity going on in the ocean in the fall time. How many wheels? Four. Did you get? Four. Four, four, yeah. Is it a good year? Is good year, good year, good year this year, yeah. Do you find wheels the way you used to find wheels in the past? Is the lava, lava, lava. You know, there's, there's a road, the Makadori road, where the wheels go every year. But if they've been disturbed, we have to go out farther. 
There's box yes, over there and yeah. spoons. Yeah. There's some soup. Yeah. There was an activity on the east side where we were no, out hunting. The oil company was doing their drilling in, uh, in the fall time. And they disturbed the animals, huh? Yeah. They, uh, they took them out 30, 30, that's when I got my well, we went out 30 miles. It's all together uh, 42 miles from the main line. Well, the people here feel like they own the land, as far as you can see, and they actually don't. But I would say the big thing that's, uh, that's different here is we can look out at the oil fields, see the animals, but we can't hunt them. So they have to move to a new area for their mm -hmm. traditional subsistence lifestyle. And I think they have a feeling that the oil companies are taking something away from them. So that's, that's the big issue here. You have some great hot dogs. <laughs> Alaska reindeer. I think that's the biggest tourist attraction in downtown Anchorage. Reindeer sausage with uh, uh, sauerkraut. Who donated them? Pardon? Who donated them? Oh, these were donated by Shell. By Shell? Yeah, Shell is doing a lot of work offshore and they're looking for a friend. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, they donated the hot dogs and uh -huh. we did potato salad and, and uh, all the pop here. You keep them far from the traditional <laughs> dishes. Yeah, I, yeah, I, but I can see the kids like hot dogs. Grandma's going to go over and have the soup and the uh -huh. tuck and all that. But the kids but like the hot dogs. Isolated. Yeah, hot dogs. Th this is a yeah. We're, we're yeah, we're kind of an outcast here, but we've had a lot of customers. Yeah. Hey, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. It's pretty hot. This charcoal burns pretty quick. Yeah, but, but we got lots of it. Yeah. How is life today? Is it is it better today? Your life? Yeah, with all the uh, pizza, hamburger. <laughs> yeah. Like what you? you know. <laughs> do they come to the village? Yes. <coughs> they Which do come. Which Shell? Shell, Exxon, all those other oil companies that are looking for oil. So that, do they come into the village and tell us sweet stuff? What kind of stuff? I mean, they ask, for, they ask for input, where do you want us not to drill? And we tell them, we pinpoint it down on the map. They leave, uh, these people that came, come in, they leave and they just forget about what we say. Next they, year they're drilling in that same area that we don't want them to touch. I seen them at the baseball field, yeah. Didn't have any contact with them, though. Nobody seemed to have any contact with them. Yeah, they want to come and show that they they support it, but they really don't. They don't know how hard it is to go out and catch a whale. You know, it costs money. You're, you know, you're risking lives. It's very dangerous. There's, you could start as young as ten years old, and they have that small kids going out whaling. Caribou, it's about this time of year, would walk through the town. That doesn't happen much. You have to travel quite a ways to catch a caribou. A lot of the oil fields and oil drill sites, it vibrates the ground. So car caribou, fish, any, any kind of animal can feel that. They're really sensitive to what what's around them, you know, if they hear something, they'll run. They have an answer for every question you ask, but their answer isn't... Convincing. Yeah, it's not so... It's not right. You know, we've been invaded. And it's hard. Is that what you think? That your land has been invaded by these it people? Has. It's been invaded, and it hurts.
last November we had went with some four wheelers and Hondas and they kicked us out. Usually let us in to have dinner and stuff. I don't know what went wrong this time, but we were kicked out and it, that just made me feel very awkward, you know, you're, they're on our land. And you know, all the years before we were allowed it there, but I was told I was 86 at a Alpine twice for selling drugs there. And I don't know where they got that information. I like I'm gonna travel 13 miles in 60 below weather to go and sell drugs. As far as I know, you could bring it into Alpine if you work there. I know people that from here go in there and buy drugs. But a lot of them have been caught smoking on, you know, that have worked there and have got caught smoking in the rooms and were fired. But they think that there are no drugs on that oil field, but there is. My name is Woodrow Ila. And I've been whaling with my dad since I was six years old. Did you finish high school? Uh, no, not yet. You're still in high school? Yeah. What do I want to do in the future? I'm not really sure about that. It's so hard. After, having, after I had my son, it's so hard to decide. Probably move down south, come up here for a visit. Why? There's so much drama up here, so many this place is out of control on alcohol. What do you mean? Too many drunks. Too much things going on. Too many people fighting here. Can't stop. You mean between the youngsters, huh? Oh, everybody. I mean, a lot of older guys, even. Just how they hate on each other. Yeah, it's losing control on that. It's my family drink. When they drink, I just hate it. Everybody drinks too much. Everybody gets into fights too much. That's not an issue about oil. That's an issue about cultural change, adaptation, whether or not you are strong in it or weak in it, that's it's not an issue of oil. It is the negative side, and it's a painful side of our life. Drugs and alcohol are a reaction uh, to the loss of our destiny. How much do you pay for gas? Three ninety-five a gallon. And they say 322 a gallon down south is expensive. You should come up here and take a look at our prices up here. They're pulling it out from under us and they're selling it back to us at, at outrageous prices. I just don't understand our government anymore. I mean, that's all money oriented. I mean, it's all money. We've been raising kids for the last 30 years and I'm afraid. 10, 20 years down the road, what's gonna happen? I've weaned my, my kids on subsistence food like this. Pretty much 60, 70% of what we eat is subsistence food. If that's taken away from us, we're gonna have to rely on that store. But you need money to go in and buy buy the food. So that's, that's a difference. When there's no jobs, you know, we, we uh to buy some from the store meat or you know food it's for a, for a steak it's like uh, maybe twenty dollars you know for one one steak I mean Yeah. Uh -huh.
my biggest worry, like I said, like everybody else at the moment, Shell Oil wants to trill offshore for the first time. And that's, they're going to be trilling right off the island, cross island, very close to it, where we do our bowhead whale hunt. At first, they told us that when you start to go out there to whale, we'll shut down. All oh, right, great. You know, that sounds like a good deal. And all of a sudden, they came back again, and they said, we were, we're not going to shut down after all. We're going to continue through drilling through the, all the time you're hunting whale. The mammals that have higher hearing ability, whales hear 800 miles, maybe more. Seals hear two, three hundred miles. And the sounds that they emit through the water and the seismic activity is uh, like a sudden pulse. It's a shock. It would drive them crazy. It would drive them uh, absolutely uh, delirious. And you see them jumping out of the water, trying to stay out of the water. Shell Oil and the other oil companies that are exploring offshore are creating a potential hazard uh, to the wild, uh, the environment. I remember Valdez. That was horrible. We don't want another. We don't want one like that. It was devastating for them, fishermen out there, animals. All you know. They were not ready for it, and I don't think they are ready to clean a mess if it happens over here. Where's your study on it? And how? We find out they're going to put their waste back into the ocean. That is terrible. Our big mammal that we catch food is down there. Will it, will that kill them off or will it, you know, get them um, sick? then we eat it, then we get sick. We have big concerns. We saw them have a spill over here at uh, this winter. I don't think to this day it's very clean. leak detection systems that were supposed to pick up a leak. They failed. It was detected by somebody smelling it. A worker driving by this thing, smelling it under the snow, and the, all these sophisticated mechanical automated leak detection systems by line pressure balance and such like that, they all failed. They did not detect it. Basically, as long as it's not broken, they try not to fix it. Um, this, is a, this is an old industry process. They do it all over the world. They do it in the North Sea, they do it in Indonesia, they do it in South Asia, in Africa, wherever they think they can cut costs. And they usually think they can cut costs through environmental compliance and uh, preventive maintenance. And that's where they cut costs. They make more profit for a short time. They roll the dice. If there is an incident like the North Slope oil spill or the Exxon Valdez, they have insurance to cover it. The great uh danger, the great threat, the great nightmare, of course, is a oil well getting out of control off in the Arctic Ocean. 
And if it's at the wrong time of the year, when ice is broken, I, people will argue with me, but I'm convinced there's no way that you can clean that up. We used to hunt whale from ice about 25 feet thick. Uh, the ice used to pile way high. Nowadays, um, the ice is thin, and we're having a hard time pulling small whales onto thin ice. The ice in the last several years has been about 18 inches thick. What normally would be a three week, uh, two to three week melt process now takes only five or six days and the snow is gone. And um, it's affecting uh, our ice. It's uh, where our environment is warming up very rap rapidly. One of the things that we see is that we have sort of an arctic haze and you can see it out in the horizon from here when you look behind me well we should see is blue sky but you see sort of a white as it goes down lower uh, this is not normal uh, from the time i was a child to the present time uh, so carbons have really built up in the arctic and it's something that's causing our environment to thaw rapidly, much more rapidly than other places, I would think. On the other side, we're also concerned with uh, persistent organic pollutants that come from uh, hydrocarbons falling into our environment. Some children are born with leukemia. We have various forms of cancer uh, affecting our people. Alaska is sort of ground zero for climate change right now in the world. You know, the Arctic is suffering climate effects and global warming more than anywhere else, even in the Arctic. Um, and so kind of ironic that, you know, Alaska's big economy over the last 30 years has been carbon, shipping carbon, hydrocarbons in this case, out, you know, making huge amounts of profits. But now the long-term consequence of all of that and warming the global climate and causing all these economic, social, cultural, and environmental uh, issues here in Alaska from global warming, it's kind of interesting that that and ironic that that has now become our great bane. What we thought was a great boom uh, to Alaska has become a real bust in uh, climate and the effects of it here. Arctic refuge because it, it means uh, more uh, me meaningful to us. Uh, oil company, they say Anwar, it's just a letters that they use and uh, it doesn't mean, you know, it, it's not coming from the heart.
We always have a right as a self-government and self-determination and power to govern ourselves, which we always did. That's why we survived even today. We were well organized to the point where uh, uh, our people only die from old age. After Western culture came to us, a lot of our people died from uh, the, the change in our life. There was a description of maybe um, 100,000 of us, but now today there's only 8,000 or less. That's always our way of life to protect the environment in order to, for it to take care of us. And that's how we always did live and that's how, I guess we're born with that and probably die with that because that's how Creator made us. They keep um, insisting we have to uh, incorporate it. But we just ignore it. We ignore the letters, we ignore all the uh, literature about it, and we just throw them away and we continue to exercise our tribal powers like we always have. Back in 1988, uh, it was a really alarming. There was they were going to go ahead and do exploration and oil development and coastal plain without consent from the Guchen. So they organized, some leader went through all the Guchen village on Canada side and this side and visit with the elders and the elders said we have to come back together. It's, it was like a rebirth of the nation because the last time we ever met like that was 150 years. They went up on a separate side, on the other side of the hill, up on the hill, on somebody's backyard, around the campfire. They wrote a resolution to protect the coastal plain from oil and gas development, to protect the porcupine caribou birthplace and the way of life. And if you're worried about caribou, take a look at the arguments that were used about the pipeline. They'd say the caribou would be extinct. You got to shake them away with a stick. They're all making love lying up against the pipeline. And you got thousands of caribou up there. You bet I want to open up a small part of a, a part of Alaska because when that field is online, it will produce a million barrels a day. A million, a million barrels, barrels a day. A All that statement like that is uh, is all the same, you know. It's all focused into the same um, intention. They don't want to destroy that land. The reason why they're trying to do that here is once again money, all over money. To my colleagues, a picture of Anwar as it exists for about nine months of the year. This is what it looks like. Don't be misinformed. Do you take a look here and you tell me if this looks like a white piece of board that he once held up and said, this is the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Don't get me wrong. I'd say about 80, 85 percent of our diet is from off the land here. This is our, how we, how we make a living. This, 
out here. This is how we stay stay alive. This is basically this is our store out here. And if the caribou go away, well, basically, what happens to the caribou is is going to be what happens to to the people. Um, this these past few years, I don't know, it has to do with this vegetation thriving like this and it's changing their route, or it's it also could be a, a factor with all these hikers that are going up there and having the, ma making the caribou change their route. But we haven't seen caribou in a summertime for seven years and if there's nothing this year it's going to be eight years oh i've heard them all in washington i've heard all the skeptics say well you can't do that it's going to ruin this or that listen there's no doubt in my mind there's no doubt in your governor's mind there's no doubt in the congressional delegation's mind there's no doubt in the minds of people who take a sound scientific look at this that we can do so without endangering the environment that we can find energy for America's people and at the same time preserve the beauty of Alaska. The companies here, BP, Conoco, Arco, formerly Arco, have, have tried to minimize their actual footprint in the, uh, the drilling pads and such like that. But when you look at the North Slope, you see a, a network of, in, of industrial infrastructure all over the entire North Slope from the, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge all the way creeping now towards Barrow. You see pipelines, you know, everywhere. There, there's not, you know, five miles of the North Slope there on the coastal plain that's not affected in one way or the other by oil infrastructure. So if they want to continue to ex expand it to the east, they want to expand it to the west, the companies do, they want to expand it offshore. And there's only so much you could do without causing sort of a, a flashpoint of environmental, uh, you know, breakdown mm -hmm. in the area, plus the oil spills. Mm -hmm. Even without major oil spills, just the chronic environmental degradation caused by oil on the North Slope is, is pretty detrimental. They're looking at basically at oil companies through one particular company, Vico, uh, the major oil field contractor here, paying legislators, elected representatives in the state government uh, for votes to for a favorable tax regime and perhaps other things as well. Uh, actually paying them bribes. It's a bribery and corruption and it's felonies. Um, there's gonna be jail time served perhaps. We've known this has been going on. Everybody in Alaska knows it's going on, but it's sort of been, well, that's just the way it works here. Mm -hmm. And it's not the way it works. You know, the public interest is not necessarily uh, completely identical with oil company interests. And often they're completely different. We've had successive state administrations and legislatures that simply have, you know, turned a blind eye to the oil industry and let them do what they wanted as long as the money flowed into the state government. That's been the problem. Oil begets corruption, change the way people think about themselves, the way politics is done here, uh, the way government is run. I mean, the oil companies basically became government. I can't even imagine looking at a billion dollars. I know I'll, I'll, that'll never happen in my lifetime, I know that, but I can't even imagine looking at a $100,000. What the hell are they going to do with all that money? What are you going to do with all that money, you know? If you just take what you need, God darn it, you save it for the next generation. You know, we only live one life, you know? Jesus Christ, you know, it's just out of control here.
American life that is uh, out of control too is uh, they're abusive. And I've been to a lot of cities, a lot of big cities around around the country. I've been to, and uh, some of the cities they don't have sidewalk. You know, you got to drive. You got to drive to get to put here and there. You can't walk because there's no sidewalks. Oil in Alaska is not the answer to our energy problem in the United States, period. There, there could be, there, there are some industry estimates in the Chukchi Sea, everything west of Barrow, you know, in the Chukchi Sea of the Arctic Ocean that are up to 20 to 30, maybe 40 billion barrels of oil, far more than, than what we know is in Prudhoe Bay right now. We're gonna need all we can find, I think. We waste five to ten times the amount of oil that comes down the Trans-Alaska Pipeline in this country just from an inefficient energy economy. Just today, some polls were released that showed that 88.9% of Americans believe we are better off trying to raise the fuel efficiency of our automobiles. The Cary Cafe provision is a job killer, a threat to the safety of our friends and families, a mandated market that eliminates consumer choice. And after all, this is still America. You know, we should be able to make our choices. We shouldn't have the federal government saying, you're going to drive the purple people eater here. And I'm not picking on this ma manufacturer. In fact, purposely, I, I wanted to have a car that it's hard to identify where it, what it is. So this is basically in, in Europe. Uh, and I, when I was over there, I, I saw these little cars. I saw people pick them up and sit them over in the parking space. The reality is the technology is there to keep the cars, the, the SUVs, the vehicles we now drive, and, and shift them to being much more fuel efficient. We could have 100 mile per gallon automobiles and mass transit systems that are subsidized so they're free in cities for people to ride. We know how to do this. We don't have to invent anything new for that, um, but we just need the political will to get there. The status quo has a lot of inertia here. The political status quo does, and that's, a lot of it's because of the enormous political influence of the oil companies. And that is that may have worked in the 19th century, it worked in the 20th century, but it cannot, it does not work any longer in the 21st century, so it needs to stop. They need to start realize that their grandchildren or their children is not going to have a healthy life like they did. I guarantee you that. So many things have changed now. I mean, take for instance this river. You look at the size of this river, how much it's eroding and all that. And this river is so much wider than it used to be. Yeah. I know that's, a, that's with the permafrost thawing out, and that's, I know the permafrost thawing out has to do with global warming. The elders told us that hard times are coming, and that's, that's happening now. As we evolve as a community, and as, the, as we evolve, we know that over time, the oil will disappear and it will be diminished. 
the people who came here for that product will go somewhere else and we will be left with an infrastructure that re will require a lot of maintenance. And so I sort of dread that time we get to that point. When there's no more oil, there's no more money. What are they going to do then? They got to think about that. That's what we're trying to think about. What we're trying to think about is down the line in the future. Thank you.